Land Conquest. I am super excited for today's video. Today we've got Matt Bosick here, and Matt is a part of our Land Conquest community, but uh, also more importantly, he is the very first person to have gone full cycle on our Partner with Pete program. So that means that uh, we agreed to fund the deal with Matt, and then the property uh, uh, recently just resold, and uh, I think everyone's happy with the deal and how that all turned out. And if you're comfortable, absolutely. I can even uh, share the numbers as we go along. Matt. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Well, um, I think you're a really um, great com um, contributor to the community as well. So Thank it's you. kind of, kind of worked out great in in this way because I think a lot of the people in the community know you. They know your posts and they see the value that you add to things. So I, I, I thought um, thought it'd be great to get on this little interview here to kind of talk about kind of your how you got started in, in land flipping and and how this all progressed um so i guess the first place to start is like how did you find about land flipping and maybe did you have a background before that that kind of led you to this point so, yeah I'll, I'll kind of summarize my my resume sheet that led me here as quickly as possible i um graduated with an engineering degree back in 2013 when the market was not doing well for uh construction and, uh, or I should say for, for civil engineers at the time and construction was doing well. So I went to a big GC cause they said, you know what, close enough to a construction degree, just come over here and we'll teach you everything you need to know. So I got into vertical construction, worked for a very, very large company doing um, some really big, uh, vertical commercial construction for many, many years, uh, became a project manager for them and, um, got to a crossroad in my life where long story short, baby was coming and wanted to be able to devote enough time to the family to where, uh, you know, I wouldn't have to work 70 hour weeks anymore. So made the change, got into land development, uh, management. So it was with a civil engineering firm, not really using my degree, but just my construction experience where there's a lot of builders out there, such as, uh, I, I work with a lot of these, uh, Pulte, Lennar, DR Horton, all the big ones. And, um, Sometimes in new areas, they don't have someone who manages the horizontal construction. So coming in and doing the roadways and, you know, the storm, water, reuse, and all the infrastructure, right? So if our firm, the civil engineering firm is doing the drawings, they will also sell, you know, kind of upsell, hey, if you don't have a land development manager, here's Matt, he'll run the whole project for you. And so that's what I do full time, uh, or that's what I did full time at that time. And... Um, with that, learned a lot about land development and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time on the side, I was wholesaling real estate and I was flipping homes and I was doing really well. And so this, this dream started formulating. I could quit my job, do this full time. So decided to quit. I was flipping, wholesaling. Um, the plan in place was working out at first, I was making good money, but the time frame was right at the end of 2021. Uh, 2022 things started going downhill. It wasn't as easy anymore. You couldn't, you couldn't throw spaghetti on the wall and have a bunch of it stick. So, um, I had partners at the time and the business, uh, it just didn't end up working out right? a mix of the partnership terms and the market and all kinds of stuff. So with that, it got very stressful. Um, had a second child coming and I realized, you know what? I, I made that shift the first time. First child was coming. I wanted stability, more time. I'm applying just as much time now as I was previously when I was on the vertical end um, on my own business. I need to change something here. So I went back to the civil engineering firm where I do land development management and um, said, you know what? I'm going to approach this differently this time. Last time I was here, um, I just thought, you know, making 20 grand a month or 30 grand a month would translate when I went full time. Doesn't really work that way especially when you're applying your funds everywhere and you're not cash flow positive and closings get pushed and you know it's all the crazy nuances of real estate right so um, learn that the hard way got stability back now it's a whole different ball game when you have a steady paycheck coming in and you're able to do stuff on the side without having to rely on those funds you have in the bank it's just my my mind has just been unleashed and the crazy part was I realized that my environment was kind of engineered for, okay, I have this second child and I'm awake crazy hours in the morning. My, I have a weird schedule where I'd sleep at 7.30 to about two in the morning every day. Um, so from two o'clock in the morning, when you, when you know that the rest of the world is sleeping and this is the only time you get, and that is it, there's nothing else. Like after work today, uh, you know, it's my lunch break. I go to work, 
I'll come back and it's bedtimes and dinners and then put the kids to sleep and I go to sleep. So that's the only time I get, you make the most of it. And so I, uh, you know, I, I pour everything into those hours. I, I don't waste a minute. I do everything I have to do. And, um, that's where land flipping came from was I, I said, you know what, I have a lot of knowledge in different real estate fields and I'm active on Twitter and Twitter has just been amazing. If, if you're not on Twitter or if your followers or anybody's on, I would highly suggest getting on a Twitter just for land in general, because the community that is their small community, they're doing subdivides and land flipping and all different kinds of little things. And I just started kind of talking to people and it was really cool. Now, not to um, not to brown nose. It's nothing compared to your community. Your community is amazing. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason why I'm I'm on the forum every day. I've made some awesome connections on your forum, Great. and it's it's been amazing. Um, but that's what got me started learning about land flipping. And uh, there was one particular investor that I connected with, and he mentioned your name. And I did some searches, watched some videos, found the forum. That was back in April, and the rest is history. Like, how do you even, uh, Twitter confuses me. I need to learn it because you're not the only one that's told me that. Like, uh, so I have a Twitter account, obviously, but I, yeah. like, how do you find this community on there? Well, I'm not going to lie. It, it's very hard. It's, it's come a long way recently um, since now it's X and it's, it's changing so much every week right now. The changes that they make on a daily basis just blow my mind. But finding the community was very, very tough. It's not intuitive. It's not at that level yet. Um, because when I searched, I, I found folks that were like doing subdivisions, like across the world, like it, it, the algorithm didn't work in a way to where it was like trying to like, you know, pinpoint me to my locale and people that I may be interested in. It did not work well at all. Um, so I would probably say the best thing I could probably do is maybe on your forum, I could probably just do a post of like, Hey, if you guys are ever on Twitter, Here's some good handles to follow because once you follow some people on there, the right people that are doing what you want to do, um, the algorithm starts working a lot better. But as like oh. a straight search from zero to one, not good. <laughs> that would be incredible. That would be yeah. really resourceful. And I would I would jump on that because that's been a topic. You know, the last couple of weeks I've had numerous people say, hey, you got to get on there and do, you know, and yeah. I just, you know. I, yeah, I got to get into it. So that would be, that would be a great resource. Absolutely. It's, it's literally folks like yourself, massive operations. And they talk to everybody directly, which is just like, it's like having the personal cell phone of 10 P Reese's yeah. <laughs> yeah. unmatched. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's too cool. That's yeah. too cool. Uh, so like, um, so as far as land flips go, like how are you generating your deals? Sure. So direct mail is always the primary. Yeah. Um, I, I see everything as kind of like a conveyor belt. So I go and target two acres and up, um, I want to do larger in certain areas because I realize uh, I focus predominantly in Florida and in North Carolina and Florida two acres and up is great because if I get something that's two acres, five acres, you're still talking about a high price point where the margin is still pretty good in North Carolina on two acres. Not the same. Yeah. yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning about that now because <laughs> I just kind of started a very heavy effort over in North Carolina and the deals that came through um, all of which, unfortunately, as of two days ago, failed percolation tests. So oh. this is all a learning process um, where I'm realizing, okay, looking at the soils is utmost, you know, it's like wetlands in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Access and soils in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, but anywho, it's direct mail, conveyor belt, everything gets sent out. Um, as I'm learning through that process, two, three weeks later, I then have my cold callers. So I have VAs and they cold call full time. I'm actually onboarding another one next week. I have the elevated one to kind of handle the paperwork and whatnot. And the whole idea behind that is automating everything and maximizing the marketing channels and reuse of those records. So I'm in mail, then it hits calls. It goes through the calls maybe three, four times. Once it's run its course in those three, four times, which one of those pass-throughs is maybe once a week or twice a week, something like that. Um, it basically falls off to be recycled again in three, four months. I'm contemplating going into SMS at the end of that, but as of right now, everything is fine. I don't want to add too much. I'm trying to like scale as responsibly and thoughtfully as possible. And just, I only have so many hours in there right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You certainly, do. you certainly have that time blocked and uh, yeah, right. it's all about that focus on priority. I love, right. well, there's a couple of things I really love about what you've told me so far is that that time blocking, you know, that you've got the 2 AM to what time? 6, 6.30. Yeah. That's your go time. 
everyone else is asleep. The kids are asleep, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And you're getting stuff done. You're focused. Right. And then you transition to your your work your regular work day and have a little bit of family time there and mixed in yeah. there as well. I'm I'm sure. But uh that's tough. But you gotta, I mean, you gotta really focus and you gotta get that uh you gotta uh go through the shit, I guess, a little bit it's, it's yeah, in order yeah, to get to the other side. But you're the type I can already tell you're already putting the pieces in place to build that team around you. Yeah. Uh you'll be steering the ship. And hopefully a lot of that day-to-day -day type stuff is going to be out off of your plate, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really a great way to do it. And you're already, you're always making moves in that direction, which, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so pretty impressive. So the, um, the deal that we did, um, if you want to get into that a little bit, I, th I think it was, uh, you know, a great, you know, stereotypical type of land flip. Yeah. And um, and I wrote down some of the numbers because I I knew I'd forget some of these, but the it was it was a just about a five acre property, and mm -hmm. it was the purchase price on it was forty eight grand, um, and it, this just came from direct mail. Came from direct mail and went yeah. through Pat Live, and then after Pat Live, I reached out. Um, it's funny this one does have that context you probably remember with there's a pipeline running through it yeah gas gas pipeline um zoning didn't allow for it to be built at first glance um and funny enough because of this the seller when i spoke to him on the phone the mail actually said 62000 i overpriced it by mistake as priced yeah. typically does <laughs> yeah yeah um but he when he had the conversation with me it's funny the things that that folks will latch on to uh because you know I, I know on the forum we talk about sometimes when you know if you're calling with a certain area code or uh certain you know whatever it is people don't or will do business with you and this guy happened to fall into that bucket where he he said you know the name of your company so i go my, my the name i'm operating under is atmos land holdings and atmos is like a greek word and he was oh. greek and he was like, do you know the meaning of Atmos? And he was surprised when I could tell him and whatnot. And he was like, yeah, that's from my country. And, all. and so we connected off of that. And that's so great. once we connected, um, he said, look, I'm going to tell, I'm going to be straightforward with you. There's gas easement through the, through the land. He didn't mention that it wasn't buildable. Of course, that's my due diligence to, to uncover that. But he mentioned the gas easement. He said, I'll give it to you for 48. And I was like, I didn't have to do any work. Right. So at the time I was, you know, Wow, I just got a 14k reduction without even trying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, then sure enough, I called the county and the first planner I talked to said, um, oh yeah, 4. Uh, 4.98 acres. Well, your zoning only allows for a dwelling per five acres. And I was like, seriously, 0 0.02 acres? And I, th that's all the difference? I can't do anything about it? And they're like, no, nope, unfortunately not. Sorry, you can submit a lot inquiry form for such and such dollars and wait three weeks. And I was like, no. So if there's one thing I can probably impart on anybody listening is um, these kind of things will happen in the business. Uh, oh, assume every deal. Assume every deal will be like this. And you can't, you can't always take the information you get up front as, uh, you know, in, in stone. And so I, I think I got this from the vertical construction and just project management background where I, I never take no as an answer. I will keep going until I know it's like definitely a no. Yeah, like you better be water, telling me yeah. hell no. If you're not saying hell no, I'm still trying. Yeah. Um, so I said, all right, well, is there anybody else I can talk to you? And I said, well, let me see if my supervisor, Nick Hayes, is um, available. And so he wasn't, I left a voicemail two days later, he calls me back. I have some emails like from the day prior. Cause I'm always like a, if you're, if I'm not getting you by voicemail, I'm emailing you, I'm doing whatever I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach you. Um, so he calls me back and he talks to me and he says, you know what? Give me a second. Um, let me take a look at something. And sure enough, he finds out that this is grandfathered into prior when the zoning changes happened requiring, you know, over five acres to be buildable. He said, here's a letter has a county letterhead on it. You'll submit this to the building department when uh, when you want to pull the permit for the home and they'll take this and no problem at all. You can build on it. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, you just created a massive amount of value just by being persistent there, you right. know, and kind of like, like following that out to the end. And uh, that was it, you know, probably yeah. the seller had run into the similar situation before <laughs> and he yeah. knew that. And that's why he did that, that in, uh, reduction off the top, you know, and, uh, exactly. 
but but then you created that value by getting that confirmation that's like hey that you know because it's like a on these properties that are like you know that where their prime use is a buildable location not a recreational type property it's like a light switch it's like either on or off right. you know and it was off when you you know first landed on this deal but you got the light switch turned on and created all this value so i i think it's awesome that's a that's a great lesson for people because uh some of these people that you talk to you know these counties or email or whatever they're just taking a quick glance at something they don't mm -hmm. they don't play out all the possibilities they don't um they're not thinking of things like like we do from our perspective they're just looking at whatever these guidelines are that they see and uh you know they're not used to being maybe challenged or or kind of questioned on these things or whatever and i like the fact that you went to the supervisor <laughs> who, yeah. who you know in in theory is going to know a little more and maybe know a workaround or something like that but but it's a great lesson in the fact that like these you know these deals are hard to put together and when you get mm -hmm. one uh you really got to Right. get a laser focus and and see if you can make it work so right. so kudos to you so nice. that you know that call or that follow-up ended up making you i mean like i'll, I'll go through these numbers here so yeah. w when you first submitted this um this deal to us um did i review it pretty quickly i believe i did i tried to review these yeah. deals within 24 yeah, hours yeah so. yeah it was very fast i think it was okay. probably less than that yeah Okay. Well, well, good. And what did I say? So I submitted the survey on public record. I submitted the letter, quick little synopsis. And less than 24 hours later, you said, yeah, this one's good to go. Um, something to the effect of, you know, we'll, we'll be reaching out here shortly or something like that. But yeah, you basically said good to go for, for funding. Mm -hmm. Did I, um, did I say in there what I thought that uh, we could resell it for? Do you remember the number? No, I don't recall. Yeah, but I remember I was underwriting it well below what it actually went out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I told you I thought we could get ninety out of it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, I that probably made me super excited because I think I was yeah. underwriting it at like eighty or something like that. So. Yeah, and yeah. you actually connected. Uh, you already had an agent lined up that ended up being great, by the way. Yeah, um, Eric, and uh, yeah, so he uh you know we talked to eric and and everything like that and he's like oh, i think we try, try you know listen a little bit more and everything but um, bottom line is i skipped a few steps here we ended up closing the, we agreed to fund it we ended up closing the deal pretty quickly because i think a lot of the stuff was already kind of you had a lot of that stuff in process already uh ended up closing the deal the the total price with everything was forty nine thousand four hundred fifty two dollars and 73 cents so that's like with all the closing costs and everything like that so we put it on the market with the agent uh, that you had hooked us up with. And he was like, yeah, this looks like a nice property. Obviously, it's got some challenges with the gas pipeline and everything. But he was comfortable kind of explaining that to the buyers. And he's like, you know, some buyers are going to balk at that. Some buyers may not care. Uh, mm -hmm. So he he really tried to fully understand what that easement meant and what you could and couldn't do with that. And luckily, you had all that research done already. So it made our job quite a bit easier. <laughs> um and uh so what happened was he's like well let's list this thing for 120 to a little high you know and then give some room to negotiate down and you know there wasn't a lot of properties on the market in that area in that particular area which is nice and it seemed to be things would move move really quickly so you could tell right. kind of all of that stuff from the online data that you see on zillow or redfin and uh what happened was we got an offer pretty quickly i think it was maybe within a week or 10 days something like that yeah it was like a week and a half it was super yeah. fast yeah yeah, and I think they, I think they initially offered maybe ninety something like that, and then we countered it and oh, ended cool. up at a at a contract price of ninety seven thousand, yeah. uh, and the purchase price again was forty nine thousand and some change with with the closing costs, and then it uh, ended up being uh, about a thirty day contract from there. So I think we ended up holding it a total of like forty three days, and then when all was said and done, um, there was a total profit for. You and total profit for us of uh, just over seventeen thousand, seventeen thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars and sixteen cents. So each, uh, yeah. yeah, each, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that worked out pretty well. And you got yeah. your wire right, right from the the title of the closing company, yeah. right? And and uh, right. we we did too. And uh, so it, it was definitely a win-win scenario. Uh, obviously, it's a great type of land flip because you buy it and you sell it quickly, you make some money, and you move on to the next property. So right. from our perspective, it worked out great. And the fact that that you brought the deal and everything cuts out a whole part of the process for us as well. You know, 
Uh, we send out lots of direct mail and we have a whole team that kind of works these leads and everything like that. But, but, you know, getting the deal is, is hard and uh, it's really valuable for us when a partner like you comes in and already has a deal. And then we're like, okay, we'll bring the money. Uh, we'll split the profits 50, 50 and, uh, you know, try to try to make it a win-win. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so from your perspective, you know, like once we agreed to do the deal and everything, was it, was it, uh, an easy process for absolutely. you from that point or absolutely super simple. Um, I love the second layer of eyes for due diligence, you know, having that, Hey, I'm good to go on funding for this is just, it's, it's a big, there's always a voice back here when you're starting out on land flipping as like, am I making a mistake? Am I? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. You know? And so having someone with a, a very long, awesome track record, such as yourself saying, Hey, this is a good one. I'm definitely going to fund it. Um, gives you that, that confidence. And, um, from that point, it, it gave me kind of like a sense of ease that I probably wouldn't have had on a first deal where let's say I wanted to do like a flat fee, you know, broker listing or, take it down myself, whatever it is, I'd probably be stressing out every day calling that realtor. But I I had to, you know, have some internal monologue and say, you know what, go back to acquisitions, it's taken care of. And that's the beauty of it, right? You yeah. focus on what you need to focus on. And that's acquisitions, because once you partner up with Pete to do that funding, it's, you know, it's on cruise control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what we try to do. That's what we try to do. make it a win-win. Right. I mean, uh, you know, the, the valuable activities really uh, are getting that deal. And if you can get the deal, you know, you can find someone like ourselves to kind of partner and we try to take it an extra step further. So, you know, our investor partners, we, we, we try to do everything from that point forward. So, so you don't have to worry about all the transactional stuff and the marketing stuff and everything else that goes along with it to, to get to that finish line. We've got a great team build out that uh, they can take care of all that stuff, take all that off your plate. And it, then your time is uh, spent focusing on the highest value activities, which are finding those right. deals, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So I think, I think that was really uh, interesting how it worked out. Now I've got another question because I remember seeing a post in the community from you as well uh, where you referenced like, you need to prove it to your wife or something, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And no, I thought no, that absolutely. was interesting because I had a similar, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys married, you know, you're in a couple, you're in a, um, uh, you're married or you're in a relationship or something and your significant other is probably looking at you like, what is this, what's this guy doing? You know, it's like, yeah. is, is this, you know, is this a scam? Is this going to work, actually work? And what, what, what was her reaction after you got the, the money coming in? Yeah, no, no. So she was super happy. Um, the whole, there's a little bit of context to that too, which is kind of funny, actually. There's a, you have one of your older podcasts where you're talking with your wife and you mentioned how you're the internal optimist, right? <laughs> you're willing to take more risk. Yes. And your wife's the complete opposite. Yeah. And I'm showing her this. I'm like, this is us. <laughs> yeah. like we're, the, we're the same way. You just got, you just got to let me do it. I promise you. Yeah. Um, because she's the same way. She's entirely, you know, looking at it as how much money are we going to lose? And I'm looking at how much money are we going to make? And so um, to, to kind of prove it to her, she, she wanted that proof of concept because so I, um, I had the funds and whatnot from the whole, you know, real estate stuff that I was doing before, but she was like, there's no way, you know, I don't know enough about this 50 grand upfront. It's just, I got, I got to see something extra. So that was really cool to, you know, to see everything come back. The really cool thing too, the metrics on, uh, and you know, I'm a big metrics and yeah. Yeah. You love your numbers. Data. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, when I associate the cost strictly to what went into getting that deal from, you know, portion of the operations, that mailer and what have you, um, it came out to roughly 4,400 bucks. So basically okay. a Forex, um, on the money in, three months, two months, yeah. whatever that is. So that's where my whole mental and some, some of the posts in the community come from when I'm like, guys, you got to focus on just the acquisitions. Just don't worry about the back end. That'll work itself out. If it's a good deal, yeah. that'll work out. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, that was, that, that's was really, really cool. Awesome. Your numbers are probably better than mine on that because I think I, I think I, uh, mentioned a bunch of times that my first mailer that I did just got a 10, 10,000 mailer just come bombed that I didn't get anything out of it, you know? And that's like five, $6,000 right there. And then, yeah. uh, you know, and then, <laughs> so the fact that you're, you know, uh, 
$4,400 or whatever it is towards that deal is great. And that'll, that'll go down over time as well as you uh, kind of, kind of refine things as well. Yeah. So uh, I could tell you're the type that learns from that data makes adjustments and continually types to uh, tries to improve so yeah right now what i'm what i'm mentally struggling with is i can tell all i need to do is just turn the dial up on marketing yes i know um but i'm scared to overwhelm myself without having all the pieces on my team yet so yes. i on my lunch breaks i'm training the VA, like one of the VAs is right now stepping up to do a lot of reporting for me. So that way I can kind of remove myself from a lot of stuff and a lot of the nuanced paperwork and whatnot. I'm probably always going to underwrite the deals for now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and do all my due diligence because, you know, they would never know to call you'd the have to get someone. Say, you'd have to get someone pretty advanced on that to yeah. like feel like they know more than you at this point, it's, I would imagine. <laughs> exactly. So that's where uh, that'll probably always kind of be with me. Um, but my goals is more or less automate as much as I can on the land flipping side, turn the dial up, turn the dial up, have the team in place. Um, always do the, you know, spend three hours or two hours a day, whatever that is, and checking everything, doing the due, due diligence on it, and then hopefully move into um, flipping land and splitting it out and whatnot. But that's a whole other, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. other stick. So. Yeah. So you're, I, I know you're in the, um, you know, you know a lot about the, land development space, you know, subdivisions and things like that. Have you ever really looked into the renewable energy side of things, building out solar farms, wind farms, anything like that? So I haven't, but I've been very curious because there's one parcel of land that I was looking at. I had a lead come in and um, it was right next to a massive like 150 acre, you know, and then I, when I branched land ID out and I saw other ones next to it and I was like, and it's owned by solar farms. It's probably not right, but like solar farms, LLC. And then I've been seeing them more and more. And I'm like, there's something going on here. And I just, I need to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, I, I went down a little bit of the rabbit hole on that maybe about six months ago. And I still think it's an amazing opportunity. I just haven't ha found the time to focus on it. But, you know, the electricity grid in our country, they're trying to, there's this big push to, change it into kind of uh, renewable energy by 2035, you know, like convert much of the electrical grid to renewable energy by 2035. So obviously there's a lot of government incentives involved with that. And a lot of, uh, a lot of big players are starting to, starting to get into that area. So I was kind of thinking about this and in reality, you know, we run into a lot of different properties and we run into properties where, you know, th those big transmission lines are cutting through the property where it's not really yeah. ideal. But some of those type of properties may be uh, ideal for building out a solar farm or wind farm or something like that because right. they're, it's easy to to uh, connect into the grid that way. So there's other things that go into as well. You got to be close to a substation and things like that. But um, to me, it seems like it's a no brainer that that's where that's where things are going. Um, there's a, a ton of institutional money as well that. If you can develop the project, if you can get the project approved and kind of shovel ready to the point you're ready to build it, they'll step in and pay you, pay you like a major premium for it as well. Oh, wow. So I think someone like you with that skill set, like you could probably figure out, you could probably figure out how to get to that point. You know, um, you know, it's, it's probably like a, a home subdivision in a way. It's just different yeah. stuff. You know, it's probably like, easier than a home subdivision, honestly. Probably, yeah, probably, and <laughs> yeah. and you know the margins are kind of tight on on tighter on the, the home subdivisions because there's a lot of people in that industry fighting for it. I don't think it's the same situation with the renewable energy side. Right, just my two cents, but I can see yeah. you know like I've thought about bringing on a team member that really that knows that that world, you know, and then taking some of these properties which I think would will work well for that and kind of like having those as a long-term play and then you know obviously yeah. we've got our flip business and everything but right right keeping a few of those longer term projects to hopefully hit the home runs in three years when they're approved you know yeah no uh, absolutely but anyhow. that's an awesome strategy I would, I would, yeah but yeah i know myself I now i'm like i'm logging this in the back of my brain so i can do you know, yeah listening every time i'm in the car because i drive to a lot of job sites and i'm just gonna ah. start downloading and then i'll i'll give you an update on anything I yeah yeah that good. i can share <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like there's a site that we subscribe to. It's called Landgate. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I think it's like yeah. 
50, 50 bucks a month or something like that. But their whole thing is kind of uh, the renewable energy and carbon credits and all this kind of stuff. So they have mapping software and everything. So you can kind of see a lot of these things that may make a property more valuable for a certain thing over another. And it's a, uh, pretty interesting uh, we don't use oh, wow. cool. utilize it to its uh capacity right now but you can actually list properties on there as well that oh, wow. have potential for renewable energy and then people uh will will come in from you know like potential buyers and some things will come in so the one wow. property I, I actually put up on there that we had i did get some inquiries from solar developers but the problem is with the solar developers uh they try to structure it in a way that uh, it's kind of, it works great for them, you know, like they want to basically lock up this property uh, until they get, the, but they're not, they're not paying you any sort of royalties or anything until they get the project approved, which, you know, might be a couple years off. Uh, so you're kind of got your property locked up. And when they do get it approved, you know, they get to give you a percentage of the revenue or some sort of like lease payment, which is actually pretty good. Um, but, and they lock it up for 30 years or something like that. But uh till it gets to that approval point you're not getting anything basically and you just have your your land locked it up. sounds very familiar on the home side a lot of developers like to lock up land until they get their full entitlements done that's and, what they do huh? you know, they, yeah they, they try to schemily make the earnest money you know not hard unless they get certain approvals so if the approvals drag out you know the seller's on the hook just waiting and waiting and waiting and yeah it's a uh, so I hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, where do you see yourself in a year from now? Like in like in, with your land now. flipping business? Sure. So in a year from now, I see myself removed entirely except for the due diligence kind of underwriting part of the land. Um, so everything fully automated, everybody elevated, everybody, you know, doing their job. Um, and 20% of my time going towards that underwriting and then 80% of my time going towards um, subdivides. I would say probably 60 to 70% because I always like to leave 10 to 20 for research into new things, such as what you're talking about with solar farms. Yeah. So um, yeah, subdivides really has caught my eye. There's actually one deal where I'm meeting with a councilman next week. Um, don't want to get too crazy into it because as you know, yeah. one in every of these thousand deals will actually come to fruition. But yeah, um, he he owns about 10 acres which the needle in the haystack when it comes to subdivides as i'm sure you know is like that perfect rectangle with the long side on the road yeah. right and that's it doesn't exist it's usually the other way around right? yeah. a little little access point and it's massive and there's a bunch of other parcels in the way um but when i saw this and i saw his asking price and his asking price was full retail for the land and so i was like oh you know it's a realtor referral but i when i really looked at it i was like wait a second check the zoning checked everything road frontage would allow for eight parcels and each one of those parcels would go for 50. And so I was like, okay, 400,000 on the back ends. And he's asking for 200 it's retail. Yeah. It's not a bad subdivide. You know, you do five of those a year and you're doing pretty well. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely. You know, I know a lot of people doing that type of stuff and you know, they'll, they'll pay the seller their price. Um, but then they'll ask for some terms, you know, so right. you're not, you know, putting up, any cash or a lot of cash right. or whatever. And you got some time to do that. And then, you know, some people even structure it too, where they make it kind of a, a win-win for the seller as well. Like they'll cut them in a little bit of the upside or something like that, but all kinds of ways to, to structure those deals. But that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. I'm going to be reading a lot about that over this next week. Cause I'm supposed to be meeting them in a week. So uh, I'll have yeah. my game plan already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. And so um, do you have any sort of like revenue figures or profit numbers you're going to try to hit you think in a year? Or? Yeah. So I would say um, in about a year, I would, I want to hit about a million in revenue next year and have hopefully be on like a 40 to 50% margin there, something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's definitely doable. You yeah. could probably you could probably do more than that, but you know. Yeah, I, I could I could just tell. I should probably, I should probably revise. It. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably revise, but right now it's um, you know, my I don't mind sharing my numbers right now. I'm on, and this is where the dial comes in. I'm on yeah. probably a total of like twenty one, twenty two thousand in spend, and this so this is actually this goes into another point where. My gross profit projected just off that 21, 22 is probably about 95, between 95 and 110, something like that. So, you know, a, a 5X roughly. 
Um, but the hard part is sustaining that 20 spend, right? When you're, when you're starting out, sustaining that spend, because you know all this stuff is going to sit on the market. Yeah. But you got to keep it flowing so that we have more stuff coming along. And so it's that first lull until everything starts hitting. You got to survive until everything starts hitting. That's the um, truth. Yeah. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm building the log and yep. I'm just trying to scale, but also do it to where I know my team can handle it. I can handle it with the hours I got and just do it all responsibly and like as, as, without going crazy. <laughs> yeah. And at what point do you think you are going to maybe make a transition to, to this full time or, or aren't you? Well, I know I will. I eventually will. A hundred percent. It wouldn't make sense not to. Um, probably I would say by the end of 2024, at, that's probably a good estimate. I don't want to say at the latest or at the soonest. I would say by the end of 2024, because by that point, probably by the first quarter of 2024, I sh everything should be hitting. And I should be at a point where I can really sustain that and see how it plays out over a year. And if it's all just money in the bank because my living expenses are covered by my job, uh, you know, my wife's a stay-at-home mama and everybody's happy, you know, kids are happy, everything's just covered and well, and this is just money in the bank to put into marketing, put into more stuff and just keep the yeah. snowball going. Then I think it's a, uh, all right, this is, this has worked. You know, everybody thinks the market's going to crash and all kinds of stuff, you know, it might slow down, it might not. Um, you know, if it works through 2024, I think I'd, I think I'm totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, I had a really, uh, uh, great time talking to you. Um, yeah, I you think too. your your kind of background, your experience, and everything is is really cool, and obviously dovetails like perfectly into this land flipping business. So uh, I feel excited for you because Thank I you. know I, I know what you can accomplish, and uh, yeah, so it's just pretty exciting to me. So I really I've really enjoyed obviously um, working with you on that deal, and hopefully we can do some more deals down the road here uh, whenever you're ready. And uh, yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, Matt. Yeah, you too.